How are you guys doing? Today is Thursday, July 1st, 2021. Um, For this episode of The Elite, I'm going to do an individual profile on Nelson Cruz. The Elite designated hitter for the Minnesota Twins turns 41 today. And with this episode, I plan on going through all the accolades, achievements, and stats that he was able to accomplish up to this day to give a better sense and a better picture as to why he is one of the elite athletes for the 2021 uh, calendar year. So if you're unfamiliar with Nelson Cruz, no, he's just a he's just a very consistent power hitter that's really been kind of dominating the game for about a decade and a half. And considering he's been able to do so, even at this point of his career, is just a testament to just his ability as a player to uh, get out of the game what his team wants him to get out of it. This is also a player that was most the most recent uh, winner of the Marvin Miller Man of the Year for his work in the community for 2020 for the very last season. But with that said, uh, I'm just going to really jump into the type of player that Nelson Cruz is. So he's originally from the Dominican Republic, from Los Matas de Santa Cruz. Uh, he would eventually find his way, uh, become, getting signed as a non-drafted free agent by the Mets organization after the Dominican Summer League, or he played in the Dominican Summer League. Uh, he would eventually move to Oakland, and he would eventually get called up as a member of the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, Nelson Cruz would get called up in his age 24 season in 2005. He would play eight games in a season where the Milwaukee Brewers would go on to finish with an 81-81 and record, the third best record in the National League Central. Um, but of course, that season they wouldn't make it. In the eight games he played, he had about he had one hit and five at bats. Um, following that season where he wouldn't really do where where he where his production wasn't really seen like that, he would eventually get traded to the Texas Rangers in 2006 for his age 25 season. And in his first season for the Texas Rangers uh, in 2006, he would play 41 games in a season where the Texas Rangers would end up finishing with uh, an 80 and 82 record. They won one more game than the previous season. In the games that he played, he would play in the 41 games he played, he finished with 29 hits, less hits than games played. Not to mention, he would also uh, finish with a 2.23 ERA on the season, a 6.45 OPS. But you can see he was slowly moving himself up the ladder. He would come back to Texas for his age 26 season in 2006. Uh, In 2006, he would play 96 games, so far the most he would play. In a season where the Texas Rangers would finish with a 75 and 87 record, they had five more losses this season than the previous one. Um, In this, in the 41 games he, or in the 96 games he played, Nelson Cruz finished with 72 hits, still less hits than games played, but he's, you can see he's getting more production. Finished with 39 runs on the season, not to mention nine home runs, 34 34 RBIs with a 235 batting average and 671 OPS. You can see that he was becoming a more consistent member of the lineup, even though they weren't really making the playoffs, but it was all really kind of coming together. In 2008, in his age 28 season, Nelson Cruz would only play 31 games for a Texas Rangers squad that would win four more games in the previous year. They finished 79 and 83. Uh, In the 31 games he did play, he would finish with 38 hits. The first time he finished with more hits than games played in a season. Um, Finished with 19 runs, not to mention 7 home runs and 26 RBIs in a 31-game season is virtually ridiculous. He finished with a 330 batting average, which is the first time in his career that he had a 300 batting average in all the games he played in a season. And he would go on to finish with a 1030 OPS as his on-base percentage was 421 and his slugging was 609. He would not play a enough games to at least get like recognized for that type of season but the next season that would actually change he would come back to tech so in his four, his fourth year at for the rangers would be his age 28 season in 2009 in 2009 nelson cruz would play 128 games in a season where the rangers would go on to finish with an 87 and 75 record they won eight more games in the previous season and in the 128 games he played, the first time he ever topped 100 games in a season in his fifth season in the league, he would be named an all-star as he would finish with 120 hits in the 128 games, finishing with a 260 batting average on the season. 
He had double digit or, or he had 21, 21 doubles. The first time he had at least 20 doubles in a season. He had 33 home runs. The first time he hit double digit home runs in a season, by the way, and it just happened to be 33. He had 76 RBIs, which, is a, which was a career high at this time. He would steal 20 bases in 2009. He would never, ever steal 20 bases in a season ever again in his career. And in addition to his 260 batting average on the season, he would finish with an 856 OPS. And then at the conclusion of the season, the yeah, like I said, the, the the Texas Rangers were just outside on the way looking in, and now that Nelson Cruz was officially an All Star, he at least turned that page in his book, and many eyes were on him. Uh, so in his fifth season of Texas, or at the on the Texas Rangers in 2010, in his age 29 season, he would play 108 games. In a season where they would end up with a 90 and 72 record, winning the American League West with three more wins than the previous season. This is when Neftali Feliz was the rookie of the year, and this is when Josh Hamilton was the MVP. Um, but regardless, in 2010, uh, Nelson Cruz would finish with 127 hits in 108 games. That's the second time in a three year span he finished with more hits than games played. He would finish with 60 runs in the 108 games, which is still a very good mark. 31 doubles, the most doubles he'd ever put up in a season up until that point, the first time he eclipsed 30. He would hit 22 home runs, which is 11 less than the previous season, but he would hit an RBI career high in 2010 with 78. He would go on to bat 318 um, on the seat. Well, he finished with a 318 batting average on the season. That's the first time he played at least 100 games and finished with a 300 batting average. And he would finish with a 950 OPS as he just missed um, being an all-star. In 2010, once the Rangers made the playoffs, they would end up beating the Rays 3-2 to in the first round. They would beat the Yankees in the American League Championship Series in six. But then they would end up having to face the New York Giants. And then they would end up losing to the Giants in five. So, of course, that's how that series went for them. And, um, and after that... Yeah, yeah, so so and then following that season with the Rangers, he would come back in 2011 for his age 30 season, which by then was his sixth season with the Texas Rangers. He would go on to play 124 games in his age 30 season in a season where the Texas Rangers would finish with a 96 and 66 record after they had almost won the World Series or after they were the American League champions last year, they had actually won six more games in the regular season. So this year they might many people thought that they were the team in 2011 he would finish with 125 hits in 124 games second consecutive season and third season in the last four in which he had more hits than um, games played he would go on to finish with 28 doubles the third season he had at least 20 doubles on the year in a row he would go on to finish with 29 home runs and 87 rbis at that point that's the second most home runs he put up in a season and that's also the most rbis he put up in a season he would finish with a 263 batting average and an 821 ops as he would miss the all-star game yet again so by the by the end of his age 30 season he was a one-time all-star and as and following the season they would go on to the playoffs where they would beat the rays in the first round for the second year in a row they would beat the tigers in the american league championship series when miguel Cabrera was at the height of his power. I think 2011 was either when he or Verlander won, where, where, where had put together their best season ever. And then once they made it to the World Series, they would lose to the St. Louis Cardinals in seven. Um, so they would make it to the World Series back to back years. And this was the David Freeze year where David Freeze completely saved the Cardinals franchise and gave him their 11th championship. But that is the closest Nelson Cruz has ever gotten to the championship. They made it to game seven and they had a chance, but they weren't able to. And even before that, Nelson Cruz was named the American League Championship Series MVP after hitting six home runs in the entire series. So, of course, yes, Nelson Cruz was becoming a mashing uh, player in, uh, in his own right. Following his back-to-back -back World Series uh, attempts or there is back to back American League pennant titles, uh, American League pennants. He would come back to Texas for his age 31 season in 2012, which of course by then was his seventh season in Texas. He would play 159 games the first time he played at least 100, uh, at least 130. He'd play 159 games in a season where the Texas Rangers would finish with a 93 and 69 record. They had three less wins in the previous season, and they would go on to make the playoffs for the third year in a row. 
in this full season, Nelson Cruz would finish with 152 hits in 159 games with 86 runs. That would be the most runs he'd scored in his career up until that point. He had 45 doubles, which is the most doubles that Nelson Cruz has ever put up in a season, even though he didn't make an all-star team. He would finish with 24 home runs and 90 RBIs. Up until that point, 90 was his career. he made 90 his career high in 2012. He would finish with a 260 batting average and a 779 OPS. And once the Rangers made the playoffs, they would end up losing in the American League wild card to the Baltimore Orioles. Um, following this season, Nelson Cruz would come back to Texas for 2013, which would be his eighth season there. In his age 32 season, Nelson Cruz would go on to play 100 games in a 109 games in a season where the Texas Rangers finished with a 91 and 72 record. Even though it was the fourth season in a row, they had a they had won at least 90 games. They would this would be the first time they missed the playoffs since 2009. Um, but Nelson Cruz would go on to make himself an All Star for the second time in his in his MLB career in his age 32 season. He would finish with 110 hits in 109 games, another season in which he had more hits than games played. He finished with 49 runs on the season, which is kind of low, but he still finished with uh, 27 home runs and 76 RBIs, finishing with a 266 batting average and 833 OPS on the season. After being named an All-Star for the second year in a row, after, and the Texas Rangers did not make the playoffs this year, Nelson Cruz would go on to sign a one-year deal, one deal with the Baltimore Orioles, which at the time was an $8 million deal. Just to try to just to show the rest of the league that he still had it because he was still entering his 30s. In his age 33 season, in his lone season in Baltimore in 2014, he would play 159 games in a season where the Baltimore Orioles would actually make the playoffs after winning the American League East. They finished with a 96 and 66 record, winning 11 more games than they had the previous season. This is the season in which Buck Showalter was named the uh, manager of the year. And in his lone season in Baltimore, Cruz would become, he would be named an all-star for the second year in a row. He finished with 166 hits in 159 games. Up until that point, 166, he would, that would be his career high in points at that point, at that time. He would score 87 runs, which is one more run than he did in 2012. So he set a career high in runs. He would finish with 32 doubles on the season, which would be the third time in his career he eclipsed the 30 doubles mark. He finished with 40 home runs on the season, the first time he ever hit 40 home runs in his career, and the only time he's led the entire American League in home runs. He would finish with 108 RBIs on the season as well, finishing with a 271 batting average and an 859 OPS for this high volume season. And in his first full, and like I said, those would be, this would be his first full season. He was named an all-star. This would be the third time in his career. And he would go on to finish seventh in MVP voting in a 2014 race, which went to Mike Trout, I believe. But following the 2014 season in Baltimore, they would go on to make the playoffs. They would beat the, they would sweep the Tigers in the American League Division Series, and they would get swept by the Royals in the American League, uh, in the American League Championship Series. And this is when the San Francisco Giants beat the Royals in the World Series for a little bit of context. But of course, that's what the no, no that, that's how that season went. Following his one year stint in Baltimore, um, Nelson Cruz would go on to sign a four year contract worth fifty seven million dollars with the Mariners. And in his very first season in Seattle in his age 34 season, he would play 152 games in a season where the Seattle Mariners would finish <clears throat> with a 76 and 86 record. Uh, they had law, they had won 11 less games in the previous season. And just to give you a little bit of context, the Mariners did not make the playoffs while he was there. The Mariners have not made the playoffs since 2001 when Ichiro Suzuki was the MVP and the rookie of the year for context. But in his very first season in Seattle, he would be named an all-star for the third consecutive season on, a, on, on three different teams, by the way. In the 152 games he played, he finished with 178 hits. He has never finished with more hits in, his, or in a season in his MLB career in 100, so 178. Amazing. The second time he eclipsed 160. He would finish with 22 doubles on the season, which by that point will go on to be the sixth time he eclipsed 20 doubles. 
He finished with 44 home runs on the season, which by then was a career high. He would not lead the league in home runs, but he would be close. He finished with 93 RBIs on the season as well, finishing with a 302, which, you know, for a full season, he, batting 300 is pretty bad. That's the, that's the most games he's played in a season where he's batted at least 300. He would go on to bat 936 for the season as well. And after being an all-star, he was named a silver slugger for the first time in his career. And he will be named sixth in an MVP voting award list that saw Josh Donaldson from the Toronto Blue Jays win the World Series. So after his third straight all-star campaign of four by that point on three different teams, he would come back to Seattle for his second season there, his age 35 season in 2016. In 2016, Nelson Cruz would play 155 games in a season where the where the Mariners would finish with an 86 and 76 record. They had won 10 more seasons than, or they had won 10 more games than the year before. And in this specific season, Nelson, this would be the only season in Seattle in which Nelson Cruz was not named an all-star. Regardless, he would finish with 169 hits and 159 games, batting 287 on the year with a 915 OPS. He would also go on to finish with 27 doubles, seventh season in which he finished with at least 20 doubles. This would be the seventh in the last eight seasons. He finished with 50 or 43 home runs on the year. The third consecutive season, he hit at least 40 home runs in a season, and he finished with 105 RBIs. This would be the second time in his career he eclipsed the 100 RBI mark. And like I said earlier, he finished with a 287 batting average and a 915 OPS for the entirety of that season. Despite not making the playoffs, he would still be, he would still put together yet another virtuoso performance, another, just to show that he's a player that gets better with age. Following the 2016 season, he would come back to Seattle for his third season there and age, or for his age 36 season, his 13th season in the MLB. He would go on to play 155 games in a season where the Seattle Mariners would finish with a 78 and 84 record with eight less wins than the previous season. In his third season in Seattle, Nelson Cruz would go on to be named an all-star for the, for, for the fourth time in the last five years. He would hit finish with 160 hits in 159 games. This would be yet another season. And up until that point, that is the fifth season in a row that he would finish with more hits than games played. He finished with 28 doubles, which is the eighth time in his career. He finished with at least 20 doubles on the year. He finished with 39 home runs, which ended his 40-year home run streak, but this would end up being the fifth time he eclipsed the 30 home run mark in his career. He would lead the American League in RBIs with 119, which is, of course, his which is his career high at this date, and this is the only time in his MLB career he's led the entire American League in RBIs. He would go on to finish with a 288 batting average and a 924 on-base plus slugging percentage on the season. Uh, he would go on to be in addition to being named an all-star for the fifth time in his career, he would go on to be named a silver slugger for the second time in a three-year span, and then he would finish 10th in an MVP voting race that saw Jose Altuve finish on top after finishing with yet another season with 200 hits. Following the 2017 season, he would come back to Seattle for his for his fourth and final season on his contract. He would play 144 games in a season where the Seattle Mariners would finish with an 80 with an 89 and 73 record they would finish third in the American League West that would be the best record that they had since Nelson Cruz had joined the team but of course they didn't that'll be the that'll be the fourth year in which he was there that they did make the playoffs in his final year in Seattle in his age 37 season Nelson Cruz would be named an all-star for the third of his four seasons in for three of his four seasons in Seattle uh in the 144 games he played he finished with 133 hits First season since 2012 in which he didn't finish with more hits than game played. Nonetheless, he finished with 70 runs on the season after his, after his four-season streak of at least 80 runs in five of the last six. He would go on to finish with 18 doubles. This will be the first time since 2013 he didn't hit at least 20 doubles. He had 37 home runs on the season, which is the fifth, the, the fifth straight season with at least 35 home runs on a year, which is crazy. He would go on to finish with 97 RBIs as well. This would be the fifth season in a row and 
six of the last seven in which he finished with at least 90 RBIs in a season. He would go on to finish with a 256 batting average, which is the lowest that he's had since his third season in the league in 2007. Um, and he would also go on to finish with an 850 OPS, which is the lowest he's had since 2013. But additionally, he was named an all-star yet again for just amazing play. And by now, he's a six-time all-star. And 2018 was the last time that Nelson Cruz has officially made an all-star roster. Following his four-year stint in Seattle, he will go on to sign a one-year deal with the Minnesota Twins. And this is the team that he's actually been with for the entire time as the Twins picked up his option since. In his very first season in 2019, uh, the year before COVID, he would go on to play 120 games in a season where the Minnesota Twins would go on to finish with an, a 101 and 61 record with the best record in the American League Central. And they would make it right back into the playoffs after missing it in 2018. The Twins would go on to win 23 more games in this season than they had the previous year, which is why their manager Rocco Balladelli would, would be named the manager of the year. Um, but following that in this in his first season with Minnesota, he would finish with eight or he finished with 141 hits and 120 games, um, which is, of course, he had another season in which he did. So he finished with 81 runs in those 120 games, which is a very high, um, which is a very high amount in 120 games. He finished with third. We finished with a. Uh, 41 home runs and 108 RBIs, which neither of them were career highs at that point, but they were pretty close. That was the fourth most home runs he's ever, or the third most home runs he's ever put up in a season, alongside the tied for the second most RBIs he's ever put up in a season in his career, even though he didn't make the All Star game, even though he played 120 out of 162 games in a season. He would go on to finish with a 311 batting average at this point. This would be the third time in his career, the fourth time in his career, he finished with a 300 batting average, the second time in a season in which he's played at least 100 games. Um, just to give a little bit of context, um, or as I guess the yeah, the, 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 the third time since he's played 100 games in which he's finished with a 300 batting average. He would finish with a 1031 OPS, which up until that point is the highest OPS he'd ever put up in his career, tied with his age 27 season in 2008, in which he played 31 games, just to show how dominant he was over the entire season. Uh, he was not named an all-star in 2019. He was named a silver slugger for the third time in a five-year stretch. And in 2019, he would go on to finish ninth in an MVP voting race that saw Mike Trout take it all. Following the 2019 season, the Minnesota Twins would go into the playoffs and they would end up losing to the Yankees, getting swept in the American League Division Series. And that, that's how that campaign ended. Following that, Nelson Cruz would come back to Minnesota for his age 39 campaign, which was his 16th season in the league up until that point. And this was a during the 2020 season, a season that was heavily impacted by COVID. It delayed the start of the season and it had to shorten the season from 162 games to 60 games. So because of that, they had to extend the playoffs, of course, giving that for um, a little bit of context. In 2020, in Nelson Cruz's age 39 season, his most recent season that he's completed, he's played 53 games for a Minnesota Twins team that would finish with a 36 and 24 record. They finished with the best record in the American League Central for the second year in a row. In this season, Nelson, in a season where they didn't name all stars, Nelson Cruz had finished with 56 hits in his 53 games with 33 runs, 16 home runs, and 33 RBIs. He finished with a 303 batting average, the second year in a row, and this would go on to be the fifth time he finished with a 300 batting average. He would finish with a 992 OPS as well, um, while being named a silver slugger for the fourth time in his career. All four of those silver sluggers had come since his age 34 season in 2015, which is another testament to show that from 34 to 39 in the second, in the latter half of his 30s, Nelson Cruz was probably at, definitely at his best as a baseball player. And uh, he would go on to finish sixth in an MVP race that saw Jose Abreu from the Chicago White Sox take it. 
in his own division. Following the 2020 season, he would be named the Marv- the, the, the Marvin or the Miller um, Man of the Year for his community service and what he's been doing off the field. And following that season, they would be they would go on to lose in the American League wild card round to the Houston Astros, who were just who, who had all the momentum really in the world. So right now that leads us into the 2021 season where Nelson Cruz is currently no, he's currently played uh, 70 games for a Minnesota Twins roster that's currently sitting fourth in the American League Central, 13 and a half games behind the league leading Chicago White Sox. Doesn't look as though this might be a season in which the Twins make the playoffs as of right now, but regardless this season, in the 70 games he's played, Nelson Cruz, is he's, he has 76 hits in those 70 games. Another season in which he's continuing to put up more hits than games play, which is a stat that I really like. He has 37 runs in those 70 games this season. Uh, he has 11 doubles, 18 home runs, and 45 RBIs as we reach the almost halfway point at this time of the year. He's batting 310. If he finishes doing so, this will be his third season in a row in which he's batted at least 300. And right now he's batting 966 as he's one of the very few um, mo- the one of the few players that's showing the consistency necessary to really keep the Twins winning. Um, but that currently leads us to where we are now as Nelson Cruz does turn 41 today as he is entering his 40s. This is a player that many people are like they many people associate him with getting better with age. So it's very possible that he's still very much in this very much in this zone and he's continuing to show why he's the best player in the MLB so of course I'm going to keep referring to him as an elite player for the 2021 calendar year with that said I want to of course thank ESPN um, baseball reference MLB.com and of course uh, the various Wikipedia pages I pulled up to uh, to come up with the facts and figures and numbers in order to do this episode. I want to thank everyone for listening to all 25, 26, 27 minutes of this piece. I have all as well. I want to thank, or first of all, I want to wish Nelson Cruz a happy 41st birthday. Um, and if you ever get a chance to watch him, he's currently wearing number 23 for the Minnesota Twins. He's in his 40s now, so he's not playing defense. So you'll only really catch him as a designated hitter. But just make sure that if you get a chance to watch him in the batting lineup, you, you, you get a chance to see him play in action. He's one of the best players um, that I've ever seen in baseball. And mo- hopefully mo- by this time next year, by his 42nd birthday, I'll probably be doing the same thing. Once again, thanks for listening to my piece. I hope all is well. Peace out. I'll catch you with a piece right after this.